that this is the greatest country on the face of the earth. I still think that. But what a tragedy to have our reputation brought to the lowest level that any of us uh, can remember. I'm sometimes charged with being a softy about war and national security. Well, let me take one minute on that. When I was 19, Pearl Harbor was attacked. A few days later, I dropped out of college and volunteered to fly in the Army Air Corps and flew 35 missions over the most heavily defended targets uh, in Europe. I've always been proud of that service in World War II. I've never had one day of regret that I participated in helping to smash uh, Hitler's uh, war machine. And let me just add this. There's never been a day in my adult life when I wouldn't have gladly sacrificed that life uh, if America was faced with a genuine threat to our national security. Some years ago, I was on one of the networks with former Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara, one of the chief architects of the war in Vietnam. But the reason I was on television with that night, he'd just come out with a new book saying that war was not only a mistake, in his words, it was a tragic mistake. Well, in the course of that three-way discussion, which included in addition to Secretary McNamara and myself, uh, Senator John McCain, and in McCain's first opening remarks, he said, well, we all know that George McGovern knows little about national defense. Let me tell you what I would say to John McCain. Neither of us is an expert on national defense. It's true you went to one of the service academies, but you were at the bottom of the class. Uh, it's true that you were a pilot in Vietnam, that you were shot down and spent most of the war in prison. And we all sympathize with that and honor you for your courage. But you and I both had these battle experiences you as a Navy fighter plane, and I as an Army uh, bomber. I um, am not going to criticize your war record and your knowledge of national security, but I don't want you criticizing mine uh, either. Uh, be allowed just one little dig at uh, <laughs> Senator McCain, since he gave me one. Uh, I would say, uh, John, uh, you were shot down early in the war and spent most of the time in uh, prison. I flew 35 combat missions with a 10-man crew and brought them home safely every time. get more applause when I'm uh, going after McCain. <laughs> well, I uh, want to come to a close soon on this summary note. First, we've got to get out of Iraq before we bankrupt our country. <laughs> Secondly, we've got to keep McCain out of the White House. said he's about the only prominent American I know that still thinks 
Vietnam was a good idea. And he's one of a diminishing minority that thinks the war in Iraq was a good uh, was a good idea. I remember General Clark, my favorite general, <laughs> my, uh, my favorite soldier. I thought he was so good that I endorsed him for president four years ago. And, uh, But um, I, I honestly believe, folks, that if by some unforeseen method McCain would end up in the White House, I believe we'd be in Iraq for a long, long time. He has said himself it might be a hundred years before we could bring our troops and close our uh, bases over there. I just want to sound this warning here tonight. I've been watching the Bush administration very closely, and I see too many signs that they're preparing the way for a possible strike against Iran. The same kind of language, the same kind of uh, uh, cultivating of the press on what a danger Iran is to the world. And they could be a danger if they get a nuclear uh, weapon, although we have thousands of them. But uh, I think they would bear watching. But I don't want to see this country go into yet another war with yet another Muslim state uh, in the Middle East. I think it would just about terminate what influence we have had in uh, that part of the world. Um, so, that's probably I was at Jim Johnson's welcome home in this building here, I think, uh, some months ago, the first time he was able to leave the hospital and come out here to South Dakota. And he said something near the end of the speech that I'll never forget. He said, you folks have probably noticed that my brain is working faster than my tongue. And then he said, that maybe that's not too bad. <laughs> too many people have their tongue working before their brain uh, is engaged. So let's elect Tom. Let's uh, give uh, Stephanie Herseth the overwhelming uh, victory that she deserves. And our brilliant state senate leader, Scott Heidebrem. One day I mean, I don't give the Republicans too much credit, but one of the great gifts they've sent to us Democrats is Scott Hyde. <laughs> now, as uh, all of you know, I endorsed Hillary last year. But, uh, but my four children my ten grandchildren are all working for Barack. Um, if Hillary wins, I'm going to tell her, you won because of my endorsement. <laughs> if you don't pick General Clark for your running mate, be sure he is at least the new Secretary of Defense. going to say, I pushed you over the top with all my offspring. <laughs> so please, uh, Barack, appoint my oldest daughter, a wonderful lifetime school teacher, one of the, uh, the most splendid women I know, Anne McGovern, as the new head of the U.S. Office of Education. <laughs> If McCain wins, uh, which God forbid, uh, I'm going to some South Sea island <laughs> and then watch the crowds go by. 